here talking about some of our friends who help make this podcast possible. Guys, first and foremost, is going to be our friends over at Yellow Jacket. Guys, Yellow Jacket has released. It's not even out yet. It, it should be out here soon. It is a new wireless refrigerant charging scale. Guys, this thing has a capacity of 220 pounds, which I don't ever know when. Uh, we're going to need 220 pounds. If you're putting, well, I guess something, eh, you'll never need 220 pounds. You can weigh yourself as long as you're not a fat fuck. But uh, 220 pound capacity, a large platform, wireless Bluetooth communication via their new Y Jack View app, which is awesome. The Yellow Jacket wireless refrigerant charging scale is the 6. 6- 8864. That is 68864. Makes refrigerant charge measurements fast and easy. Just connect with any smart device and you are ready to go with a 0.5 accuracy and a 0.2 ounce resolution. Service technicians can count on the precision measurements every time. Save the charging measurements to your smart device and you have a permanent record for the installation or service call. Guys, I have my hands on this scale. I have a video coming out on it. Uh, I really like this thing. It is built like a tank. When you put it in your hands, you can just tell that it is high quality. It comes with a nice uh, case. And like I said, the YJ View app is really, really good. I give it to Yellow Jacket for redoing. The- I know there were some questions with the Mantooth app. Well, they answered it with this, and this app looks awesome. So, guys, start looking at shelves soon for the new Yellow Jacket Wireless Refrigerant Charging Scale, part number 68864. All right? You guys, remember, Yellow Jacket, 70 years of expertise built into every tool. And guys, remember, if you're looking for a CRM, guys, check out Service Titan. Service Titan is the best in the business for a reason. The who's who are using Service Titan. Um, We are in the process of getting links set up so that you guys get your special discounts. With summer being so busy, we didn't really have time to get it done. So for right now, uh, if you want to get discounts for being part of Uncensored Nation, email us at hvacuncensored at gmail.com if you are interested in switching to Service Titan. And we will get you guys connected to the right people. Uh, So you get your discounts uh, and you get hooked up for being part of HVC on Censored Nation. All righty. Stop playing in the minor leagues and go up to the big leagues with Service Titan. Tighten up, baby. (gasps) On to the show. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all. God bless the United States and thank you to all of our global listeners. Five, four, three, two, one, go. If you're trying to take your HVAC game to the next level, then buckle your seatbelt, crank up the volume, and try not to be offended. Because you're listening to the HVAC Uncensored Podcast with Gil Cavey and Kelly McKay. Now, here's Gil and Kelly. Yo, 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 what is up, everybody? Welcome back to the HVAC Uncensored Podcast. I am your host, Gil KV Jr., sitting alongside my buddy, old pal, Mr. Kelly McKay. What is up, my man? What's going on, man? <sighs> Nothing, man. I feel, like a, I feel like a new man. I feel like um, I just popped my cherry again or something. <laughs> you know, like I'm, uh, new beginnings. Yeah, it, it, new beginnings. Yeah. It, it, it's definitely exciting. I will have to say that change yeah. of change of pace, but uh, um, we'll get into all that. I won't jump into it a lot. If you, if you don't know already, um, you guys know that I've worked for the same company. I was the, you know, pretty much second. I was, well, I was second in command. I was an, an operations manager uh, for a company on and off for 12 years. And um, I kind of just outgrew the situation was uh, faced with an opportunity um, that I, I took and I'm very excited about it, that I am the new um, chief operations officer for Beltway Air Conditioning and Heating. Mr. Ryan Grimes is the owner of that company. He uh, will be on the podcast here in the next few weeks. And um, yeah, me and him just kind of hit it off, man. We think alike. 
He's got an awesome company here, and uh, I am just really, really excited to be a part of it. So uh, we'll we'll get talking about that um, here later in the yeah, show. I'm I'm but, excited uh, for you, man, because just just the you know how exciting it is just to do something different. Like you got a new environment, you're meeting new people. Now you've got like a, a whole new like a clean slate with all the all the people there to like build your your leadership position with them, you know? So, I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. And, uh, and, and I can, I can imagine that you are excited. So. Yeah. Well, plus thing, and, and you always told me a, a lot of times, man, especially at my last company where I'd always go into the field too much. Yes. I was doing too much, um, you know, that you're more valuable in the office and, I would always hear that and know it. And I was getting better with being in the office and not in the field as much, but I don't know. It was like something just clicked this summer. And even know that I am, I will always be a technician at heart. And I love, I love this trade. I love to fix things. It, it clicked, man. Like it just, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. Like, I don't want to be in the field anymore. Like I, I want to be in the office. Like I want the challenge to make something grow to where that is my whole, that's what I do every day. I mean, obviously I'm still going to do sales. I mean, that's, that's my bread and butter. I mean, I, I'm going to do right. sales, but I love that just concentrate on helping other techs increase their average ticket, help them be the best that they can be without doing the job for them. You know, yeah, like that, that, that really, really excites absolutely. me. So good. Um, and I know you can, you can crush that and you know, you've kind of already been doing that anyhow, but I do believe that, um, from our many conversations that there was, there was nobody saying, no, Gil, stay here, sit, you know, sit your ass in that chair and let's figure out these numbers. Let's, let's crunch some more numbers, whatever, what, you know what I mean? Like, let's, let's get, you know, John, let's get his game up, whatever. Instead of like, no, Hey, we're swamped. Oh my God, Gil, can you go run some calls? Like, I feel like that's kind of what you're up against. Or if it wasn't being said, we naturally were going to put that pressure on ourselves because if you don't have a clear directive and exactly what do I do while I'm here, you're always going to revert back to what you know. You know, and it, and it, it was, it was being said. I mean, I okay. guess if I would have really fought against it, I would have been all right. But me, it's like, yo, yeah, okay, I'll do yeah. it. You know? Um, but, uh, yeah, so I'm this, it's definitely a, a, a new, new chapter. I knew one thing I didn't realize how many goddamn tools I have until I started cleaning out your truck. All off of, <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, man. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's it's pretty pretty awesome. Uh, this is good. Um, we were supposed to have a guest tonight. I won't say the name, um, but uh, the person is a a repeat customer. Uh, but they got they got busy tonight. They're out there, you know, kicking ass and taking names. So we will reschedule that person. But it is good, you know, when we have guests back to back to back, which I think we've had some some fucking awesome guests here the last couple of weeks. Um, all the. Uh, talk everybody who's been saying stuff about the podcast has loved them. So obviously we thank you guys. I think they were good episodes, but uh, what I was getting to is I like these podcasts sometimes where it's just me and Kelly, where it's uh it's more laid back where it's not as structured when we have a totally. guest and having it. I, you know, I always so. like them. You know, I'm a huge fan of these. Like I get burnt out on guests, even if they're, I'm not saying, you know, even if they're great guests and it's great conversation, they got a great product or a lot of knowledge and that's fun and cool and everything. But man, I just like it when it's just you and me, honestly, it's my favorites because, um, it is more laid back. I, I don't feel like I'm so like, uh, you know, not that I'm not yeah. focusing, but like when you have a guest, I, f- I feel like it takes it to the next level of focus, which wears you out, you know? And so. No, I, I, I agree. Um, like we always tell you guys, man, there's a lot of things behind the scenes that makes a podcast go. It, it's, it's not just, you know, hit the record button. If I remember to hit the record button, <laughs> um, it's, uh, uh, yeah, there's a lot of things and, and paperwork and learning the background of somebody so that when we ask a question, like we know what we're asking, that we're using factual details and we're not like, they're not like, I don't work for that company. That's not how you pronounce my name. You know, little yeah. stuff like that. I mean, it, it just, 
Yeah. And, and when we have guests, not that we don't, you know, we can sit here and talk, you know, Gil and I are good friends. So we can, we could sit here and talk all night about nothing um, and enjoy it. <laughs> but uh, uh, oftentimes when we get a guest on, a lot of times we're, we're, we don't, we've never met the person before half the time. So we're like trying to get to know them real quick before we actually roll. And uh, you know, and then, if we hit it off with them, well, then we want to visit with them afterwards. So those can just go long. And, uh, you know, I will say some of those guests that off recording the beginning sometimes is the funnest part. Yeah. I, I I don't like doing it because we get into the meat and potatoes pretty quickly. And I'm like, just, just say, I just want to say, stop, let's just save this for the, for the recording, you know? Well, it was fun with Pete because yeah. we told we didn't talk about HVAC. We talked about well, all kind of stuff Pete, that stays Pete's easy. easy. So, like when it comes yeah. to conversation, like he could talk about anything. So, you know, he's he's yeah. a great he, great guest, and I'm sure we, you know, we'll get him to come back on later too. So, I'm sure. He yeah, those too. conversations are hidden in the <laughs> HVAC archives. You guys came. Yeah, what we talked about, um, but it was fucking hilarious though. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I guess anyway, you guys haven't heard from us in a little bit, uh, real fast. Sorry about last week. Um, we actually had a interview set up with Mr. Victor Rancor. We were having Victor come back on. Obviously, if you guys know Victor, you know, he's fucking tearing shit up out there on the West coast with the time difference. Um, Victor has a new baby. So we were having a little time crunch with having to go later, um, you know, so we just weren't able to record. Um, no, no big deal. You know, stuff happens. And I mean, Victor's, you know, kind of guess that it's, uh, it's worth waiting for. Um, and I had done a special podcast with, uh, our buddy James Alul from better air. And, uh, we talked for like an hour and a half and I never hit the goddamn record button. So that's why you had no <laughs> podcast this week. And my mind was so mush with starting this new job. Um, you know, me and Kelly just talked about it, I mean, I was at the same place for, you know, 12 years, man. Uh, so the change was, I was excited, but nervous as balls, you know, um, and, uh, questioning myself, if I was doing the right thing. So my mind was kind of scattered, not to mention two weeks ago. Uh, if you guys aren't friends with me on, on my personal page and Facebook, um, I had a 19 year old pit bull that passed away. Um, she had been doing kind of rough and it was a Saturday, I actually went into work that morning and did some stuff. And then my wife and my mom called me and said, Hey babe, it's, you know, it's time. We made an appointment for 3 PM to get her put down. She didn't even make it till 3 PM, like two 30. She passed out. She, um, she passed away in my lap and, uh, I knew it was going to be hard, but it was harder than I thought. Like that, that dog has been with me my whole adult life. You know, like I literally bought her out of high school and, you know, she's, she's been here before all four of my children. Like it really, really like, Oh no, it, it absolutely rips your freaking heart out. And it's, yeah, it's, uh, thankfully you have, I mean, you had a really nice, that's a really good life for, I mean, my goodness. I mean, be thankful that you got so many years with her, you know, cause even, even yeah. when, they're, they get, they get so close to you so quickly. And I've had one that was just two years old and I got to tell the story real quick. Worst day of my fucking life work wise, because my boss is like, Oh, we just have this one thing. It's just data net. Data net was the name of the company. And they were like, uh, um, I don't know what they did, but something for Walmart. And, um, it was, but it was a clean and check. So, Anyhow, uh, our dog had parvo and we took it to the vet and they got, you know, paid $400 and, um, kept getting this up and down. It's like, Oh, he's doing better. He's doing great. You know, we'll, I'll check in with tomorrow. Tomorrow's like, Oh, he is not good. You might want to come up and see him now. And it's, it's just this roller coaster. And we took him in like on a Saturday and by Wednesday they had to put him down because Usually with Parvo, if they don't make the turn within three days, the third day is what my vet told me. They either turn for the better or they turn for the worse. And he didn't turn for the, uh, 
for the better. So came home and buried him. And, uh, my, my boss was just like, Oh, just come in. We just got this one thing. And I really, I wind up going and I'm like, I remember I'm climbing up this ladder to get on the roof and I get up there and I'm just bawling. <laughs> like I'm just so crushed and so heartbroken. And I was by myself and it was, it's one of those where you got to string 200 foot of hose. And I had to, you know, climb the hose up, drop it up over, go down, hook it up, um, turn it on, go back up. and just an absolute nightmare. I cried the whole time I was up there. I'll never forget that. It's one of the worst working days of my life. So I hope you took the rest of the day off. Oh yeah. yeah I, you, I, you I couldn't, couldn't even drive, you wanted, know? Man. Yeah. Um, and the Sunday after that, I met a guy on a job to help him. And this, like, I don't know if it was like, uh, I don't know, cruel and unusual punishment, but there's one customer who like, my Roxy was, she was very like, she was like all Brendel and white and she had like a triangle on her, her, her like yeah. butt. Um, and I've never seen a dog mark like hers, but this one customer had a male and he was, he was the closest dog that I've ever seen marked mm-hmm. to her. We go to that guy's right. house. I walk in, I see his dog and I literally just start bawling. Like I, I couldn't yeah. have helped it if I yeah. wanted to. Um, and, uh, the guy's like, Gil, he's like, you are, Hey man, like everything. Okay. And, and I told him, and I told him what happened and he was like, Oh shit, man. He's like, I'm, I'm sorry. He's like, I remember you saying how much your dog looked like mine. And, um, yeah, I just, uh, I just lost it, but thank God he had a little, uh, like seven month old little like blue pit. Yeah. Uh, little, like the ones that are gray with the blue and the light puppy um who they called uh skippy because he was like he would like do that like dragging his ass thing but it looked like he was skipping yeah. so that kind of made me happy but yeah i was like jesus <laughs> man this this blows yeah but, it, uh, it's gut-wrenching man they're just part of your family we we um i was raised with dogs like uh, my dad always hunted beagles so he ran field trials um ran rabbits with them and uh at any given time, I was just telling somebody this today. We we had no less than like eight dogs my whole life. They were outside dogs. We we, we still had inside dogs too, but I was just deeply raised. Like, and I had dogs all around me my whole life. You know, my, my mom showed boxers when I was a kid. So we had two or three boxers or maybe four, um, like showed them like, you know, AKC like shows like, so they were the inside dogs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One of them was. And so anyhow, like I, I've got a huge like affection for dogs. They're, they're really special and they're special in our household too. So I get it, man. There are, they are our yeah. babies. Yeah. We're, we're going to try to get another one. Um, I'm just going to, I want to just wait a little bit, yeah. you know, I got to let this thing go off before I, before I get right. something else, because my thing, I kept questioning myself, like, well, you know, maybe I should have put her down sooner. Like maybe I let her suffer right. and she didn't deserve right. that. You know, I go through that battling that guilt with yourself and stuff like that, but it, it, it is what it is. Uh, anyway, I took us down that rabbit hole. So that <laughs> is some of the issue that has been, um, was going on. So anyway, you know that we don't ever like to miss episodes, but it does happen. Uh, one good thing with my new job that Ryan, uh, the owner of my company, I'm not going to call him my owner, <laughs> um, Ryan. Uh, so if you ever hear me say Ryan, that's my, the guy who owns my company. That's my boss. Um, he is all for the podcast, which is awesome. That was part of the agreement. And he's, uh, I'm going to be able to film a lot more, he's all for me filming whatever I want behind the scenes in the office, stuff like that. So, um, uh, this should be good. If anything, it should be better for the podcast. It's going to free up some time. Don't got to worry about, you know, getting home at nine, having to record at nine 30. So, um, yeah, it should open a lot of, a lot of doors for us. So that, that should really, really be good. Um, I guess anyway, if you're going to um, film just real quickly, there's like, um, yeah, there, you know, you probably should go print out a form, that just says that you have the right to like to that video footage and that the person 
gives you permission to post it anywhere and do whatever you want with it. Um, just to be safe. Um, yeah, no. and he should do that too. You know, for in every business should do that for your Facebook, for instance, if you take a team picture, like everybody should have filled out a permission slip saying that it's okay to use their picture wherever you feel fit, you know, um, basically. So I can't remember what they call it, like the technical term for it, but it's just, just a little form. You can find, find one, just search it online. Yeah, no, that, 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 that makes sense. Um, and normally I would never film in someone's home without, without right, asking. Right. Like I just, I right. don't, I don't think that that's right. I know a lot of people that do, they just film. And when customers ask, they just say, Oh, I, I film my work to keep log of it. And <laughs> most people don't say anything, but I, I, I wouldn't do yeah. that. You're in somebody's home. You're a guest, you know, you were invited in there, but you, you need to ask you guys. Um, and the uncensored Facebook group. I know you guys do that shit all the time. I just was, do yeah. you see that post where that the guy was um, filming the customer washing her one inch, like 50 cent filter from Walmart. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't see that. <laughs> <Cracks me up. laughs> this is the, oh, the green ones that are real flimsy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and he's going to fall yeah, apart. It, it was, it was. Head. I saw the one that some guy, it was, uh, it was actually in Houston. It was so hot. He threw a steak on like the grate, like the sewer yeah. grate. And it was like cooking. Gee, you could Christmas, see it steaming. Yeah. yeah. I was like, Jesus. So yeah. Um, what have we been up to? We're, um, we're actually learning more about indoor air quality. So everybody's super excited about it. I'm excited about it because you know, it's just, it, it, this is an easy addition to any company. Like we're already in the house. We already know these things. So if you're looking at like adding like the next product or line or service that you're going to do and you own an HVAC company, this is the, this is the most logical step because you're literally, boom, you're in the indoor air quality business. All you got to do is buy some products, get educated and then start selling them versus like trying to add plumbing or electrical or HVAC. If you're, one of the other trades. Um, that's a much more difficult step to do and it's way more costly. And it's like built, it's like growing a brand new business half the time. Yes. You have a set of customers that you can market to and you can do the cross training, the cross marketing, you know, with the guys communicating, Hey, did you know that we offer plumbing services now? Um, and you can do like a, you know, we do a four point or eight point inspection when we go out, go to do their, the HVAC maintenances, uh, for our agreement holders, but that's all way more difficult, way more expensive, takes a lot more time. Um, so if you're just adding, like, if you're just looking at like, how can I add another stream of revenue to my company? Like look into indoor air quality, you know, I mean, we've been doing indoor air quality for a little while now, but I'm looking at like expanding my knowledge on it and my product line. Yeah. Cause I mean, guys, we've talked about right now, sadly with the, the pandemic and the coronavirus, uh, a lot more people are thinking about clean air. They're thinking about IEQ. So you have to just offer options, whether you're on a service call, whether you're selling a system. Um, you, I'm not saying shove it down the people's throats, but you just have to, you know, you can even bring it up like almost like, um, not jokingly, but like, you know, with everything going on, you know, we just, you know, we do offer solutions as far as uh, indoor air quality to clean the air, to make it better for you and your family. Um, you know, is that something you're interested in? And they're going to tell you, yeah, well, you know, what do you got? Or they're going to say, no, most people are going to say yes. Okay. So don't shove it down their throat, but just tell them. And then when you explain your products, what I found is most people do at least something. You know, it makes them feel like they accomplished something. They've protected their family. Yeah. Um, some people will go all out like, hey, I want this, that, this, this and this. You know, I want to make sure it's it's crystal clear in here. Um, but guys, like we always say, you know, a closed mouth doesn't get fed. You, you can't say nothing and expect to sell it. That's not how it works. Um, and so just, if you're not saying something, you're missing out. I was Sorry, just going to say, and just general fact, fact finding. I mean, how do we find out what is important to the customer? We have to ask questions. And they're going to tell you if it's important to them or not. Or if, if, you know, Johnny has asthma 
horrible asthma or, you know, a family member has the flu or has COVID or whatever, like they're going to tell you these things if you just ask the question. So not a family member that like lives there, but like somebody they know, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) But uh, obviously be careful with what you say. Don't say that you're, I'm going to cure COVID in your house. You'll never get like, I would never say anything like that, but can we take some, can we be proactive and put some products in the system that are going to improve the air, indoor air quality? Absolutely. Yeah. I tell them it, it, it can only help. Yeah. Like, ma'am, I can't tell you it, 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 it kills COVID. Um, I know it kills a lot of, you know, different things. And obviously then you're going to, you know, read verbatim what it says, you know, what, what it can do, know your products um, be like, but I do know it, it can only help you know, yeah. what's going yeah. on. It, it's not going to hurt. Uh, so it's, um, uh, one thing I am glad that, uh, here we do, uh, they do do duct cleaning and dryer vent cleaning. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very happy to offer those kind of services in house because we didn't have them. Um, so that, that's pretty exciting. Cause I do think that that's, you know, something that also fills these voids. I mean, cause if you guys like as far as summer, if you guys dropped off. Oh yeah, totally. We're, we're, yeah. we're into like, um, okay, it's time to by the first part of next week, like by Tuesday, we're going to be starting our first round of like reaching out to everybody for our maintenances. You know, um, it might be a little bit early, but the weather feels like fall, man, already. It just turned off. Yeah, we, it's, it is here. Like we we keep having these, like where summer's like trying to, trying to still hold, it's like scratching and calling at the door. Um, Like it'll pop up and there'll be like a 95 degree day and then it'll be like low eighties, you know, high seventies and then 90 something pops back in again. Uh, We've been getting a lot more rain, but for the most part, the service calls off the hook are gone, right. but, um, uh, they have a good bit of, um, sales calls here though. Um, so, um, I'll let, we'll talk about it when Ryan comes on, but th- the way he's getting leads through the website and stuff like that, um, it seems to be like working for him. Almost, yeah. It's like almost like two a day. That's good. Yeah. So, um, I'm hoping to run with those and, you know, I mean, hell, if I can close 60% of them, that's, I, you know, we're I'm going to be working on just a campaign. I know I, I'm probably just a little bit behind, but I ain't going to be that far behind. Um, so probably looking at maybe some direct mail, definitely Facebook. Um, also just to you know, email to our existing customers. Um, we have that marketing pro with, um, service Titan. So now I need to go in and cancel my MailChimp account because I don't really need that anymore. I got, I could do it all from the system right there. Just do a, a, you know, blast email to the whole, whole customer base or, or I can really segment it. Like it is insane how you can narrow that and niche that down to a particular customer. Uh, as this particular group of customers, I should say. Yeah, it, it is pretty wild. Uh, one thing is, you know, um, going, going to the new company, like I was, me and Kelly were both, well, Kelly is still service Titan. I was using service Titan. They're using house call pro here, um, which we're probably going eventually going to switch over to service Titan because when, um, I show Ryan all the reporting features yes. and, um, guys running a business, it, that's service Titan is so, so valuable because of what you can know is going on in your business at your fingertips. It's just, it's amazing. It really is amazing. Um, and nobody does it like them. Um, I, I will say that, um, I have done like the demos and stuff of house call pro. Um, you know, I never use them like you right. did, Kelly. I do think it's pretty neat. I like some of the features that it has. I think it's cool. Um, but, I, I, you know, I definitely, even as an administrator in there looking around at some things, um, 
I definitely see where companies that it could serve a purpose totally. for you, especially totally. as, as a smaller company that you can function and it's good. Uh, but I, I do think if you're wanting growth and stuff like that, that, that service tight is the way to go. I think so too. Um, we're also making the switch to iPads. I bought the first two um, because we've just had the smaller tablets, you know, like a, I want to say like a, what is it? Eight inch screen, like a smaller tablet. Yeah. So these are like the 10.2, whatever. I figured that would be way better for the customer for a presentation to, you know, it just be easier to read, easier to see the videos will look nicer on a big screen. So I'm excited about yeah. that. I've only bought two. Um, I'm going to slowly just buy one at a time here. Um, I could have went and bought them all. I just, I needed to replace two. So I wanted to just started with those. Yeah. Get, get some otter box yeah, cases for ordered. them. Like, uh, yeah. One thing I did on ours is, and I know like guys are like, Ooh, pop socket, you homo. But when you get the otter box and it has a little hole in yeah. the back, I yeah. would get like some plain Jane colored pop sockets and stick it on the back. And then the guys would love it. Cause then they could just hold the tablet in their hand as they're doing stuff like with one hand. Yeah. Um, and it, it was one of those goofy ideas that worked good. The guys loved it. I liked holding my tablet. Um, one thing I'll show you, I, I bought a bunch of them off of Amazon. Uh, they're like the knockoff Apple pens. Yeah. They're like, um, like 20 bucks a piece. And we got all the guys, two of them. I'm like, I'll buy you two. You break it. You, you gotta buy the next one. I'll order it. I'll take it out of your right. check. Um, and, uh, it was just good for, cause a lot of customers, like I had complaints where like, they really don't like signing with their right. finger. Like it's, it's a pain in the ass. And I didn't want to, you know, 130 bucks or 200 bucks or 150 for the Apple pen pencil or whatever. I'm not going and buying everybody that when I, I can get them two pens for 40 bucks, get everybody one. And, uh, they, they were neat, man. Like there's no connecting. You hit the button and it cool. signs, but you definitely like those, you can't, you can't drop them. I mean, if you drop it, you got to take care of it or it's gonna, it's gonna mess up. But anyway, they, they worked great. Right. Yeah. Uh, for what we needed them the for. Pen, yeah. You can't drop the pen. Is that what you're saying? Not the, like the Apple pencil itself, the one I had, you can drop that. That thing can take gotcha. a beating, but the knockoff ones that I was getting for right. 20 bucks, like you, I mean, if you drop them on like carpet or something, you're fine, but you drop them on like concrete or right. something. Um, the little tip of it, it either breaks off or pushes in and, and then it's, it's, toast, it's screwed. Yeah. yeah. But 20 bucks, you know, it, you, you buy another yeah, one. Definitely share that with me. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, a lot of cool things happening We're we'll put together a campaign and uh, get started on our maintenance contracts. And, you know, you know how it is guys. Like when you first start reaching out to people, it's always like, they're not ready. They, they're still stuck in summer mode, even though it really feels like fall here. Um, but we've been kind of like you, I mean, we might get, you know, 85 degree day and hot and humid and then, then it's 75 and rainy. So it's just kind of back and forth. But, um, so there's a good portion of people who won't be ready yet. They won't respond. They won't, we won't be able to get a hold of them or whatever, but, um, but there's still a good portion that will be. So we're focused on just what you and I talk about all the time, Gil. It's like, just, we don't want, like, we're trying to build a culture of no zero tickets. So we've got yeah. all these prepaid maintenances, you know, and we don't really make anything off the prepaid maintenance. So I don't care if it's like just two extra filters that somebody purchases. Um, there's always something that somebody needs without question. Um, even if yeah. it's just a, a supply of filters to get them through this season. I mean, so we have to look at anything that we can practice, you know, offer. Um, I don't care if it's $5. It's still something is better than a zero, a goose egg. Yeah, guy. Now we're you know some of you in you know on the west coast and down south, you're still hot and heavy yes. in the summer, and that's fine. Your guys' mindset hasn't changed. But if you're in a climate where you're the same as me and Kelly, summer has died off. You're kind of in no man's land again. There's in between season. Now is the time to rest up. You know the guy who's been bitching about working all the hours. Now it's time to get your body rested, whatever you need to do. Uh, start getting your mindset into 
heating, you know, gas furnace, heat pumps, boilers, oil, whatever it is that you work on um, and get yourself back into the not as many calls make every fucking call count. Okay. And training, 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 training for the managers and owners. You, you have time yes. now. Like do we're doing morning huddles like every single morning, which we're pretty good at anyways. You know, we typically do that, but um, we're also, I'm not afraid to, you know, go longer and let's, you know, the other day we grabbed, we, we've got some scrap units in our, in our like yard, um, not at my house, but like at our shop also that we just haven't moved to my house yet. So we, we grabbed one of those and threw it up on the table and it had a, you know, a time delay, time delay relay in it. And I gave them a scenario. I'm like, okay, we need to wire around this time delay relay. Let's do it. How do you do it? And it was just a good training for everybody because everybody could, because I've, you know, guys, you don't always see time delay relays anymore. Um, no. But it's the, no matter what or how good your sales knowledge is, you've still got to be good on the technical side. Like you've yeah, got yeah. to have that down. So um, we talk about sales an awful lot, you know, but we, we also, it's just because I think, sales are more exciting for us than the technical side. Cause we've been doing the to Gil and I, we've been doing the technical side for years and, and we're not know-it-alls or deeply technical by any means, but you know, like we've literally ran between us who knows how many tens of thousands of service calls, like in it, with your, however many years total in the field and my 20 some years in the field, like it's a, it's thousands so yeah, plus, and we haven't sold anything that if we had to fix it, we could exactly. fix it. Exactly. If it was fixable. 100%. Um, guys, guys, don't ever, I don't care how good you are at sales. Don't ever let your technical side lack and hide, hide behind the selling because it will only last so long and you will get out it. And trust me, it's not going to be good. Okay. You don't do that. That's all I can I'll say. Also is, add, is I'll also that. add to that. And if you do not make the sale while you're there, um, like if it's, if there's any way you can get them up and cooling, I would at least try to walk away with the repair. I don't care if how old it is. If they just, if you, they, you can't help them see the light. If there is, you know, if it's something you could do right there on the spot, then give them the option. You know, it's fine if you go ahead and lay out options for them and stuff. But what I'm saying is don't walk away and let it not cooling. Let, let it not be cooling because they're definitely going to call somebody. If they, if they didn't buy yeah. it from you, they're going to buy it from somebody else. So. Yes. And make sure you're following up with people. People don't realize that. I, I mean, I, I'm, I do very well with sales. But I, I can't sell everyone right then and there. I can't tell you how many ones I've had to follow up with. The follow up is huge because a lot of guys think that if they didn't get it while they were there, oh, they went with somebody else. Not always. I'm the. I want to be the guy to follow them, follow up with them. Like I'm going to call them the next day. Hey, this is Gil. I was out with you yesterday. I was just um seeing if you made a decision. If, and if God forbid they say yes and they chose someone else, I'm like, well, do you mind me asking, you know, why? I would just like to know, you know, to make myself better for the future. Like, what what was it price? Was it their, you know, their presentation? Um, but uh, it's weird. A lot of guys aren't following up. And if you follow up, be like, you know, we were undecided, but you know, like I think I'm gonna, you know, since you're on the phone, I'm gonna go ahead and move forward. Um always follow up. Like, I don't want to say pester them, but what I do when I don't get the sale, I'm, I, I tell them, all right, well, you know, go ahead, take some time to think, you know, I'm going to give you a call, you know, about five 30 tomorrow. You know, you said you can come at five o'clock. All right. I'll give you a half an hour, you know, to settle. And I know it's a pain in the butt when you first get home, you know, sit down, relax for a second. I'll give you a call about five 30. Guess what? Five 30 on the fucking nose. I'm calling that customer. You know, like little things like that go a long way. Um, so just make sure you're doing that kind of stuff, guys, that you're, when you're doing these PMs, be looking at everything. Like something is dumb and some guys are like, you know, and they don't like this, but whatever, get over it. If I'm working on a furnace and the, or doing a, fern, a PM on the, the heat pump or the furnace and the water heaters right next to me and it looks horrible, 
I'm going to tell those people, be like, Hey, you know, furnace actually looks great. You know, everything looks good. I did this, do your whole, whatever you just did be like, but I did want to bring to your attention that the, that water heater is looking a little rough. You know, I mean, I know that's not why I was here, but you know, there's no way I could see what I saw and not bring it to your attention. And they're either going to say, Oh no, I appreciate it. I, I'm, I ain't worried about that whole thing right now. Or guess what else they might say? Yeah. You know, do you guys replace those? Actually we, we do replace water heaters. You know what I mean? Just, you have to just bring things up. You don't got to push. All you got to do is bring up topics and let the customer bite. If they don't bite, so what? But guess what? If God forbid that water heater leaks two weeks from now, fuck man, that Gil from, from Beltway, man, he, he told me that thing was, you know, he tried to give me a price on it. I didn't do anything. Like me and Kelly always say, cover your ass. Like now's the time guys that the sense of urgency is gone. Okay. It's not a hundred degrees outside. The customer is you got to work um, for your sales now. Exactly. And you, you got to try to make every call count. You know, now's the time to maybe package some things, you know, offer some discounts, but don't go crazy. Okay. Add more value versus cutting your costs. Okay. Um, because our costs don't change as running the business. So, um, I, I don't always believe in the whole, um, Uncle Joe Casera just had a great little thing. I don't know if you saw that about. Yeah, I'm not um, sure. Yeah, in one of the groups, he had something that was really, really good. I probably really did good. read that. It was, he was talking about not not discounting, basically. Yeah. yeah, you know, rather than lowering, you know, worried about lowering your prices to make it cheaper, why don't stack you concentrate it. on adding, stacking value to why you charge that much? Um, it, it, not saying sometimes you might not have to drop your price a little bit to get that customer, right. but we're talking about like not across the board, like, Oh, Hey, I'm going to lower my prices by 20% because I just need to get sales. No, you know, then you're just kind of running in circles for low ass profit margins. You know, that that's not what you want. No. Either. Um, um, I, I so. would just add to what you were saying about follow-up initially is that if for any reason, any reason at all that you don't get a, an answer, a yes or a no, and it does require follow-up, which does happen to us. You know, we're all human. <laughs> and uh, sometimes they're just not going to make a decision right there on the spot. So when that does happen, nail down the time, like, okay, well, how long, you know, like, well, we need a little bit of time to think about it. Well, the, my first thing is I'm going to say, okay, well, I'll just run outside and sit in my truck for a few minutes and just turn the porch light on when, when you're ready and I'll come back in. I mean, this, my time is your time. I'm here for you. You know, I would try that first, but if that didn't work, then I'm going to, going to, uh, basically I'm going to nail that, nail it down. Like I'm going to go ahead and ask, okay, well, um, how much time do you think you'll need to make a decision? Oh, and they're going to tell you, well, Probably, you know, I'll let you know by Friday at the, at the very latest, we're going to know by Friday. Okay. Well, I tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and call you on Friday. What time do you think would be a good time to call? Like just nail it down. So they know that you're going to call. Like, um, it's going to be better than just leaving it to random happenstance of, or whatever's going to happen. Like, you know, oh, well, we need a couple days. Okay. Well, I'll call you in a couple days. No, I want to know exactly what day and when is a good time for me to call? Um, you're going to have a far better chance of like getting a hold of somebody and hopefully give it, getting an answer, you know, no is perfectly acceptable. I would rather have a no than not them not answering or not returning my calls and just being up in the air because then we're, we're, we're living in the realm of maybe, and everybody hates being in the realm of maybe I want a yes or a no. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. um, one other thing that I'll say is that in the event that you do have to, I just learned this this week and I shared it on some Facebook page, but, um, in the event that you do have to email a bid because we, we hate emailing bids, you know, it's, you're going to have a much higher closing percentage if you're actually doing some type of a presentation where you're there to answer any questions, um, get the concerns that they have out of the way. And you'll have a, always going to have a much better chance of closing a deal if you're right there with the customer. Or if call them. Yeah. But um, if you're going to send an email, never send an email without a person attached to it. 
Um, so once yeah. again, nail down the exact time that you're going to send it. Okay. Well, I'm going to send that email, Mr. Gill at eight 30 tomorrow morning. Okay. And you're saying, okay, that would be great. Um, okay. Well, I'm going to send it actually at eight 29 and I'm calling you as soon as I hit that send button because I, and then as soon as you answer, I'm going to say, Hey, Mr. Gill, I just sent you that email that I told you I would, you know, eight 30 on the dot here. So, um, I just want to make sure that you got it. Well, I haven't had a chance. Well, could you go ahead and get, bring it up here? Let's look at it together and let's go through it. And that way, if they have questions, concerns, misunderstandings, you can get that out of the way. But if you're not on the phone with them, they may take something completely wrong or have a misunderstanding and just never call you back and you never know and you never have a chance to overcome any type of a, of a objection, you know? Yeah. Well, a new, a new thing here that I've never done before is Ryan was doing that with a zoom call. Perfect. Perfect. And he, he said, he said it w- was working where, you know, that way you're talking face to face and he would share the screen and be like, you know, so this is what we're going to do. This is that 20 seer inverter system. You know, this is the one that remember I said that one that does all this. Well, that's going to be that, that's you even know, better. And that's even better. I love yeah. that. Yeah. And I, I, when he said that, I was like, that's fucking amazing. I that's love that. That's a great idea. idea. I'm going to uh, use that. I'm stealing that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the other one is, and I know that you've done this before, Kelly is, you know, guys, if you're ever at the table and you have your price and, you know, I don't ever, I will never take my price to, to rock bottom. I always have wiggle room and a price, you know? Um, and if they say, you know, was that the lowest you can do? Um, you know, then I tell a customer, you know what? Hey, if we can make a decision today, if, if we can make a decision today and we can leave here with a signed contract, you know, I'll take off X, Yes, you know, but that, yeah. you know, but that's today only if I leave here today, then, you know, that, that goes away a little bit of incentive to leave there, but you have to make sure you say, cause I taught that to some of my guys at my last company, but they wouldn't say that that's only for today, right. you know? So the customer calls in two weeks later, Hey, you know, John told me that, you know, I could get this price and he was going to take 500 bucks off. And I was like, no, well, or you, that, gave, you gave that, the bid in was, April when you're dying for work. And then they call you in the middle of July and they, they want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, Hey, that, that was for that day only. And, and we always put, you know, uh, that our bids were good for 14 days yeah. only. We would get 14 days max. And I would always say that, you know, rebates come and go availability prices change, yada, yada, yada. Um, And sometimes if they call back on the 15th day, the price didn't change, but I still give myself that right to be able to, you know, Oh, it's, it's gonna, you know, Hey, I got six jobs going on this week. So maybe this one's important, but not as important, you know? Oh, well actually the price went up 400 bucks, you know? Um, yada 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 the rebate went away or some bullshit right. uh but um but yeah you can use that little tactic to close but it's right then and but there it creates um, it's a sense of urgency and oftentimes that's the lacking that's the thing that's lack especially this time of year like you were just talking about like that's the lacking thing is we don't have a sense of urgency right now because we're you know the weather's mild um the air conditioner if as long as they still have heating or cooling um somebody who is not like who doesn't have some expendable income or cash who doesn't have somebody who doesn't have that or who doesn't have great credit like they're not going to be in a hurry to change what's working period no, that's i had a lady that i went through before i left supreme that she hasn't had air conditioning in three uh, years i was like oh this is going to be fucking great like obviously she has no sense of urgency no. Um, you know, uh, and then she was like, she didn't make a decision that day. And then she called back and she's like, Oh, well, can you give me some options on zoning and this and that? And I was like, um, no, no, I can't. Yeah. You know, I was like, you know, I was like, ma'am, if it, you know, I, I'm not, or no, actually she called back and I did give some other prices and then she called back one, something else. And I said, man, we, you know, we need to get dialed into something. I'm not just going to send you prices every week. Cause you want prices or something that, else. That like, is actually a, a sign. If they're over kicking the tires, she's a tire kicker. 
and she's kicking them obsessively or excessively. When they do that, chances are you're wasting your time. Well, I love me and Ryan talk today and I really love, this is why I love, you know, why I went there because of his yeah. mindset and how he think. But, um, uh, you know, the Wolf of yeah, Wall Street. That's who I'm, that's read, who I was. Have you read that book? Yes. Yeah, Straight line selling is the one I read. And, um, I I've taken like six pages of notes on that. And it's, that's one of his, you've got like looky lose. Um, so he teaches all this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the one he says about when he asked, you know, he used to ask everybody, you know, sell me this pen, right. you know, sell me the pen. And he said, if anybody ever actually tried to sell me the pen, I wouldn't hire him. He said it was the guys that would say, Hey, I just wanted to know, you are you in the market a for a pen? Yes. Exactly. Yes. Create if there's a need. He's like, if they're not a buyer, then get the fuck out of there. I'm not going to sit there and waste time talking to you. He's like, if some, some customers are not buyers. Yeah. And if you've assessed in 30 minutes that they're not a buyer and they're just wanting information, then, you know, he's like, all right, well, Hey, when, when you decide that you want to do something, you know, just give me a call. He's like, don't sit there and fucking waste time. And if you know, after 15 minutes, okay, get out of the conversation to leave. Don't take four hours. And you already know that they're, they're not going to buy anything from you. So I was like, I, I like that. That's really, really yeah, good. That's part of it. That's definitely part of it. Um, that, that particular book is called, um, way of the wolf and it's the straight yeah, line selling is. system. Um, yeah, I listened to that entire book and, um, like intently and took notes and I've got like graphs written out, um, and went and watched a whole bunch of YouTube videos. And I've been kind of training bits and pieces of it to the guys. Cause it's all relevant and it's all just valuable sales training. So I definitely recommend anybody who wants to learn more about that. It's worth get the audio book. That's what I did. I just been listening to it and taking notes. So I want to get more in some of these books, man. Like, do the, you know, do the, I never really had you time. Gotta do the audio version. If you're like not a reader, if you just don't like to read, which I'm back and forth, I'll go through spells where I like to read. And then I'm like, I'm done for a while. And I, then I just do audio books for a while. But the key um, one, one particular book that I read, um, and I've talked about this, but maybe some people on the podcast haven't heard this before, but it was an acronym for, and it was faster. Jim quick. He teaches people how to learn. And this, his book limitless is a great book. And he uses the acronym faster to teach people how to learn. And I'm, t I'm here to tell you, like I'm a user. It totally works. Have you ever read two or three pages and you get to the end and you're like, what the fuck did I just read? You know, yeah, like yeah. This, this happens to me all the time. And I know I'm not alone. I think it's a really common thing. Um, although our brain is probably processing it and working because it's like a supercomputer. Um, I still want to be able to recall what I just read. And it makes you feel like an idiot when you read something and you can't even remember you don't, don't retain, retain it. it. That was yeah. my thing. I would read it, but not retain it. Like in school, that was the problem. Yeah. Um, and I think that's why I never wanted to read, but um, I agree. I do like the audio books. The last one I did, it's been a little bit when I did, you know, Tommy Mello's um, home service millionaire, but yeah. that was awesome. Yeah. You know, when you're not listening to this podcast, <laughs> um, you know, uh, put on an audio book and listen to something like that. That's what I did. And I mean, Christ, that's a pretty long book. And I finished that in like a week and a half. Um, you know, so it really doesn't take long. And I, I, I loved it. That, that was, yeah, that it was is great. A good book. So the acronym real quick is F stands for forget everything you learned before. Don't go into something thinking, I know all this, you know, it'd be like you going to another fucking carrier class and you shut your brain off. Cause you're like, I could just teach this class. I, these, these guys, well, you, you don't want to approach those classes like that. You want to keep an open mind to grab that next nugget to learn that next thing. Uh, okay. I won't, I won't. Do yeah. That Cause you may, able, you may be able to, may be able to see it from a new perspective or a new light. So forget what you've, what you know, number, the A stands for act, which means take notes. Like you've, you've got to take notes. Um, S is state, which is just change your state. Like take some deep breaths before you, anytime you can change your state before you learning, like you're, you naturally, when you change your physiology and get pumped up, like you will retain more of what you learn. It's just a fact. Um, and then teach the T is for teach. 
So when you teach something that you just learned, you get to learn it twice. And I do this all the time um, because it helps me learn stuff just like I'm doing right now. Enter is enter it into your calendar, like some learning time or reading time. I don't care if it's first thing in the morning when you get up and take your first smoke, you know, like you go outside, smoke a cigarette, pop on an audio book, get, get it to be where it's just a habit. Listen for 15 minutes and shut the damn thing off. I mean, it can be that simple. And before you know it, you'll be through a whole book and you'll be ready to start the next one. Um, and the last one, which is the most important one, I believe, is review your notes and then actively recall. Actively recall what you just learned, just like I'm doing right now. Um, acronyms really help you learn stuff. So if you can break anything down into an acronym, because, dude, I learned this two, three months ago, and I still remember it faster. Forget, act, your state, teach, enter, and review. I still remember it. So anything you can throw into an acronym, you can make it up yourself. Well, think about it. How many people, grown ass men, remember, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally? Do you remember I that I don't one? know what that's from, no. For math, when it's the sequence of operations, um, you know, per, do you do the parentheses first? Um, uh, you no, forgot, forget, yeah. But it, <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's, it's like for doing math right, problems. Gotcha. like. You know, the sequence of how mm -hmm. to do it. You do what's in parentheses first. Then you do, um, I forget what the E is, but then it's like, you know, uh, d division, subtraction, whatever. Right. But, you know, that's something, even if you don't remember, you know, exactly what it is, mo a lot of people, if you hear that, at least around here, we were taught that you remember it, you know, it's something that sticks with you. Uh, so it's, it's the same, same kind of thing. Yeah, he, he has another great one that I really took away from that book, Limitless, um, is uh, lies. He calls it lies when, when he's talking about, um, I don't know, the different stories and stuff that we tell ourselves that tend to hold us back, keep us from doing and what we really want to do and being who we want, really want to be. And that's limited ideas entertained. Yeah, uh, those are lies, and we all have them, and we all tell ourselves we we enter entertain these stupid ideas all the time. So, anyhow, great book, but that in particular, when it comes to learning something new, like totally use that. I'm telling you, it works. Yeah, well, I mean, the moral of this can be this time of year when you have a little bit of the extra time, be making yourself better. Make yourself more valuable. We, I always say at the end of every podcast, every video, do what the next guy is not doing. Um, so now's the time to do that when you have, I mean, I get it in the summertime, it's kind of hard, but um, now, you know, we've taken our foot off the gas. Now is the time to be able to get ourselves better. If you didn't hear like one of our previous episodes, um, is uh, with Interplay Learning. And I really love what they're doing, earn while you learn. Um, guys, you can go on there and be taking classes at night in what you need, certain areas. Maybe you're weak on certain areas and you can be getting better, ready, going in to. Um, I bought it. I bought it for all my guys. Yeah. Did you? I, I've been talking to Ryan about it. I love it, man. I love the fact that you can give guys homework. Uh, guys can qualify. Uh, just a little touch up course, I, you know, before we. I just in. gave them a challenge to finish every single HVAC course. Like it makes you have a passing grade before you can move on to the next one and um, do with the little quizzes and stuff. So everybody's going to go through that and they're going to get, you know, I've already told them what, what they're getting when they're done. And it's totally worth it. Like um, we're, we're incentive based, you know, so I believe in incentives. I know a lot of companies don't, a lot of business owners, they're, they're like, Ryan, you join it. Yeah, dude. dude, that's what motivates people is incentives. So you can't just, you can't in today's society, I just don't feel like you can just rule with an iron fist in your company and have it last long. Like you're going to lose, um, you're going to lose respect with your people. If you're just all fire and brimstone, like rah, 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 it's going to be my way or the highway. You better get this shit done. No, it doesn't work that way. Like there, what, what 
you know, I'm going to be, um, there's value for me for them to go finish that. Cause they're going to up their skills, right. Up their knowledge. And the better they are, the better they're going to make the company. So I feel like it's a win-win for all of us. And, um, because if they, and if they get through it, I'm going to make sure they win because I know that they're going to go out and return the favor and make sure we all win as a team. Yeah. Plus, I mean, you, you might spend a couple hundred bucks, but you're going to make that back tenfold in the culture totally. of the company, the morale. Like today, my first day, he had a cleanest, a truck uh, inspection was the cleanest truck that he gave away, like, you know, hundred dollar gift cards, scratch offs, like, um, you know, and apparently, um, um, uh, what was it? Oh, one guy made a comment and he was like, man, I really need some extra loot. And he was like, well, we, you know, there's a hundred dollars cash to whoever's got the, the cleanest truck. Guess what? That guy has the cleanest truck today. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, yeah. he, you know, that showed that that guy wanted that. He's you willing know what to I mean? work like, for and it. He, yeah. And you just saw how these, um, the culture is great there. Like walking into it, it, it was just amazing how everybody's happy. Everybody wants to be there. They love it. Um, it's, it's, it's awesome. It, it really is good. So I, I, well, I agree. you got to respect somebody who you say, Hey, I will give you this, but just, I just need you to do this. You got to respect somebody who actually does that, you know, because that tells me that they really want it and they really need it. So, yeah, it's like, Hey, you know, um, it's like, man, I, I really need 500 bucks. Well, hey, I can't give you 500 bucks, but I can give you the opportunity to make 500 exactly. bucks. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I can give you the opportunity to help yourself and someone who really, really wants it will, will jump at that opportunity to do yep. that. Um, there, so, there's a great deal. Yeah. There's a great deal of courses in there that are not, uh, the 3d interactive VR. There's a great deal in there. Really. It's just the diagnostic courses are the, you know, you can still uh, go through them just on a laptop or a a desktop. Um, I think you can on a tablet, but it's a little tougher. Um, But that's a very tiny, small portion of the, all the courses. So, uh, but you know, what's cool about it is there's solar courses in there. There's, um, plumbing courses like the, you, you just get them all. It, it, it's not segmented. You get the whole platform for one price and it's a, a yearly price. You pay one price and you get it for a year. Um, totally worth it. Yeah. Well, I love how you can get Nate certifications. Yes. You can get Nate hours by there's doing even it. A, a, um, a, an exam for EPA. There's like three, yeah. they're not, not exam, but there's three prep courses in there for people taking their EPA tests. How cool is that for new, new people? When you hire somebody outside the industry or whatever, who doesn't have their EPA test yet, their EPA license yet. Like that's cool. It, it is cool. I mean, and then um, even uh, with the carrier stuff he did, the, the fad dealer, you can get hours. Um, you yeah. know, I mean, they could probably yeah. eventually do that for, Train the different yeah. manufacturers. Yeah. Like I, um, train would probably be last, but I no, know what you mean. Probably uh, last. <laughs> just kidding. Um, uh, well, Goodman, I don't think anybody can even buy Goodman. They're sold out everywhere. Like nobody even get their That's stuff. They'll sell it to um, anybody. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Everybody was selling, everything, selling systems, complete system for 1995. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I really do love what they're doing, guys. Like the trade, the perfect technician academy. Like if you can afford to go to school um, and you're a hands on learner like that, we both highly recommend what they're doing down there in Texas. Um, but I love what Interplay Learning is doing with the Earn While You Learn. I just think from a business standpoint, you can't beat it. Like me and Kelly said, as far as um, uh, you can pay for it and a guy is working for you during the day, learning at night. It's just, you don't got to send them away to school. You know, he's there the next day. You can keep track of what they're doing. Like, um, it's, I, I, it's awesome. I think it's really good for a business owner to far to help your computer, help your employees and help your company at the same time. It's a win-win, you know, anytime anybody in the company gains a new skill or learns something new, I mean, 
everybody wins, the whole team wins. So, um, and like I said, back to, okay, we're slowing down a little bit. Let's ramp up our training right now. Let's get better. Let's, let's pick kind of, you know, pat everybody in the back. Let's go out to eat, go celebrate with your team. If you've not celebrated with your team, like I highly recommend that in the next month, set something up. You're, you just had a long, hard summer. Everybody worked their ass off. They're all tired. It's time to go celebrate. So I'm going to say thank say you. Thank you. Yes. And then, um, but in the meantime, let's ramp up our training. Let's get better. Let's raise our average tickets back up because oftentimes, um, Oftentimes, I mean, let's be honest here, tickets will go down. Uh, the volume goes up because you're trying to get to everybody. Uh, but too often, you know, average tickets go down. So let's raise those back up. Let's focus on providing a super high level of service again. Um, not that we didn't try and do, did our best during the summer, but you guys know what I mean. It, when you got more time, you can, you can just do a more thorough job. Yeah. Well, people think summer's over. They can, they can let off a little bit and, you know, kind of slack off a little right. bit, you know, but you can never slack off no. guys. Um, you know, to, to, to be honest and, and I don't really want this to come off the wrong way, but if God forbid you make a mistake, mistake in the summertime, you got enough revenue and enough customers coming in to kind of hide it. Now we're getting to the point where it's exposed. It's, it, it, Exactly. You can't, you can't hide it because you, you'd only have a certain amount of calls to work with and every single one has got to count. Yeah, you know? uh, definitely. And so. I, and you know, when it comes to Goodman guys, I like to poke fun at that, but um, I know that Goodman does have some good incentives for dealers like a hundred percent. And I actually talked to a sales guy because Goodman's pretty good at reaching out to you at least once a month. I normally never answer the phone, but I, the guy just happened to catch me and I answered the phone and he's mm -hmm. like, how can I talk you into like, just add, you know, selling a couple more pieces of Goodman or whatever, you know, I don't really sell any of it, but, um, but they've got some really good incentives and he opened my eyes to that. So I don't, I don't blame anybody. I just like to poke fun at it. So I'm not beating you up if you sell Goodman. That's what, what I'm saying. Well, so. one thing, yeah. One thing I heard is they have where they give like percentages yes. back at the end of the, you know, yeah, like 5% back or something like that. And I think they're, um, I think it ends in like February. So when you're like slower and you sold some stuff like hell, 5% might be 10, 20 sure. grand. Absolutely. Getting 20 grand when you're going through that period, that's a good chunk of change for just, Maybe, I mean, if that's like you're the only brand you sell, great. But if you just, that can be like your low bid. Oh, hey, you, you, you know, you're looking for the cheapest thing. Okay. I can sell you, you know, a 14 seer Goodman. Right. And, you know, you sell a couple of those throughout the year and you get back some loot, man. I mean, what the hey, hell, you know? That's at least that's easy, right? I mean, what Train did, and I'm still not very happy about this, but um, they did a motor bearing unit. So as, as being a TCS dealer, um, any motor bearing unit, I get $25 back for. That was one of the things that I signed up for, um, when I like renewed my TCS membership or whatever. Well, you got to go on a different website than comfort site where you have to, you know, register equipment that you sold. Cause we do that for our customers. Um, this is a different site and you have to punch in all this extra information and then it loads a prepaid visa card. Well, the amount of time, like I'm going to have to pay somebody to do that. I don't have time to do it. I just don't. And if I pay somebody to do it, like it's going to take so much extra time. It's almost not worth it. And yeah. by the time it's all said and done, I don't know what that dollar amount's going to be. Five grand, six grand, seven grand. I don't know. But, um, I haven't even started it because it's ridiculous what you have to jump through hoops just to get your, your rebate or whatever. And it just That's shouldn't crazy. be that way, you know? So I'm real, I am upset yeah. about that. And I definitely told my territory manager all about it. And he's like, dude, I totally get it. Everybody's not happy about it. You know? So we'll fucking change it then. I was going to say, that means fucking yeah. change it then. <laughs> they know means. how much shit I sold. Pull it up on your damn thing. Yeah, you, you bill me for it. You know exactly what I sold, how many motor bearing units I sold. Why do I have to go 
prove it again somewhere else. So anyhow, I better yeah, stop. <laughs> but change that train. <laughs> hold on, we gotta gotta get hold on, Kelly's <laughs> heartbeat. Let me uh, hold on. Let me uh, where is it? Let me take taking some notes. Tell Kelly to relax and do some yoga. Um, all right, stop, typewriter. I was just kidding. Stop it. But uh, man, we actually been going a little bit longer than I thought, man. So we might want to start to close this out, man. So. Uh, well, let me stop. I'll, I'll let Kelly go. Oh, no, we, we, we talked about a lot of great things tonight. So I hope you guys took some value from this. Please share this podcast with your friends, family, coworkers, relatives, go subscribe on all your favorite podcast app, apps and uh, be sure to leave us a review. I need to go look at reviews, see if we've gotten any new ones. Um, but please leave us a review guys. And we love to read those on the podcast when we see new ones pop up. So, uh, but otherwise it's just good talking to you. Have feel like I've haven't talked to you guys in a while or Gil. Yeah. So it was good catching up and, and uh, we are, you know, we're probably going to have some type of, um, I don't want to say too much, but the interplay learning, if you're interested in that, reach out to us once again, because we have connections. We can help you out there. Um, so give us a shout at hvacuncensored at gmail.com. Other than that, um, yeah, go make money. <laughs> um, yeah, guys, we have some things in the works with um, uh, Interplay Learning. We love what they're doing. So um, we're going to try to see what we can do with them to... Um, to help get it to you guys as much as possible. Cause we really, really love what they're doing. Uh, Doug Donovan, uh, the CEO that we talked to is just a really, really awesome dude. And, uh, we just, uh, love what they're all about and what they're doing. Uh, yeah, man, I hope you guys got some value out of this, man. It's that change of the season. Uh, you know, me and Kelly, no really particular topic, just bouncing around, but just knowing the importance and what we have to do in this transitional period going into a shoulder season and, um, you know, don't, yeah, get a little relaxed. Maybe you're getting off a little bit early. Enjoy that. Let your body recover. Take the wife out to dinner, take the kids to do something that you didn't really see them all summer, but it's, you know, it's, it's still business time, man. And, and we, we just, we got to switch into different phases. It's not, it's not, we're going to go off until winter time. It's, you know, it's just going into another phase. So uh, now is the time to be learning, doing all the stuff that we talked about. There's all, oh, we always have to be getting better. Always, you know, there's no such thing as staying the same. You're either, you're either declining or you're, you're getting better. So I, I really, really believe that. Um, but, uh, Yes. Uh, if you have not went over, uh, especially all the business owners, managers, if you have not subscribed to Kelly's channel, the HVC millionaire, Kelly gives some gold nuggets on there as far as things to do to help you in your business. Um, if you have not subscribed to the HVC uncensored channel, please go do so. I'm finally having some time to be able to, uh, put the videos on there. I have one that should be coming out probably by Friday or the weekend at the latest. Uh, but I'm going to be filming a lot of vlog style things behind the scenes, uh, that I think you guys are really, really going to like. Um, as far as Kelly said, as far as the, um, all the podcast apps, the only one right now that I'm in, we're on every podcast app except for SoundCloud. For some reason, I don't, I, I'm trying to look it up. It says something about space, but I don't know how to fix it. If I got to buy space, I, I don't know what it is, but um, we're on everything else. The audio podcast is even on YouTube and the video podcast are back up, are going to be back up onto um, YouTube. So you'll be able to see the video podcast of this. The audio always comes out first. So what the best thing to do is go to your podcast app, subscribe, listen to the audio a couple of days later, go over to the YouTube channel, subscribe, and then watch the video version. Double dose. That's how you really learn and start digging into your fucking brain. All right. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking. Um, yeah, man. Uh, I love you guys, man. Remember, stay safe out there, man. Uh, always make it home the same way you left. Uh, make sure you're unwinding now. You're relaxing, but you're, you're switching gears into a new phase. Um, be learning. Do something. Making yourself better. Use this time wisely. Um, 
always do what the next guy's not doing. Always be making yourself better. All right. Uh, we've missed you guys, man. But uh, until next week, man, we will talk at you mofos later. All right. Peace. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the HVAC Uncensored Podcast. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Instagram or email us anytime at HVACUncensored at gmail.com. Now get back to work. Shut this down. The views and opinions shared on the HVAC Uncensored Podcast may not necessarily be the views and opinions of our sponsors or guests.